Hey guys, what's up? Happy Monday. New HRX graphic, new day, and a new matches in console league that we'll be having today on this very, very fine Monday. Of course, I'm super excited to see what we have in store for all of us today, but I can't do things alone. Drum roll, please. The person right next to me is Kresnik. See, so you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, no, I'm okay. I'm definitely okay I'm just here. That. I'm just here to, to keep you going, honestly. <laughs> Emotional support for fun. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to need it. Well, for anything, because I'll be super, super excited for all these console games. We're going to need somebody to be able to calm me down, whatever it is, and we're actually right. watching this stuff today. But, of course, I mean, I'm excited to see... You know, what it is that we have for this very first match uh, mm -hmm. to see how Aaron Monner, you know, of course, takes if they end up taking it over Ariel Arise in this case. I mean, it could be either or. I'm interested to see how both of these teams are really going to try to fight against one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it, it still is a match that could mean land implications, you know, moving forward. Both teams are six and one. So it's really hard to say they need every match really matters for them. Moving forward, six and one both. They have to get these wins, even if it is against a one and six team. They still do have to have to get it. You know, they can't yeah. they can't really falter now. Aerial Rise was a pretty strong team in the in the previous phases, and they could still pose a threat moving in here for Iron Monarch. Right, exactly. I mean, of course, we have to take a look at the standings though. See where everyone is placed. Kurt, well, not a standing. Sorry, the the schedule. See where everyone is placed. I get a little bit ahead of myself. Aerial Rise is going to be the first. They're going to have their first match against Aaron Monitor today. Bust Down versus Absolute Rain Gaming, Onslaught versus Strimix, and then Classified versus Eternity Esports. Close. We have the offline games too Flashpoint versus Stush, Cyclone versus Vroom Vroom, Heating Up, Hydra, Hype Unit, and E Storm. Yeah, and all these games, the, the EU games are definitely, the EU regions are definitely a lot more in contention. NA, I think those teams might have clinched their land position, but there's still no reason to stop playing. You know, these teams are kind of proving themselves still, getting their, you know, fight, fighting it out basically still right. in those well, regions. I mean, well, of course, we'll have to see how much longer it is or where they have to fight it out, how much more they have to the top, because we're going to take a look at the standings and see what EU PS4 is looking like right now today. Flashpoint, of course, in first place. Aaron Monitor in second. Aerial Arises in last. Stitch Gaming is in third. Both of them are one and six, but we see they have at least two, uh, a difference of two map differentials for both of those third and fourth seeds. Yeah, and looking at this, like I said, this region still is in contestion. You know, Flashpoint and Aaron Monitor both could kind of fight for it. We'll have to see how these games today go. I mean, Flashpoint against Stush probably sided towards towards Flashpoint. That one's offline, not going to be able to see it. But Aramon Early Rise, again, Early Rise were a strong team. Right. In, in the previous phase, moving into this Aaron Monarch, they, they really can't they can't give anything up here. Every match point matters moving into this contention, especially since they're one in one versus Flashpoint. Well, yeah, I mean, at the same time, though, they're going to have a, to have a pretty big climb. Being able to try and take down Aaron Monarch, I mean, we've mm -hmm. seen it before. We've seen it with yeah. Flashpoint. We've seen it with Aaron Monarch. Of course, these two are the top seeds in EU PS4 on the console league for for a reason. I mean, they Ariel Rise is going to have to take a lot of time and effort to be able to try to make sure they can actually overcome and end up beating Aaron Monitor in this case, or at least take a map or two off of them. But, I mean, they've, they've got their work cut out for them today, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, beating Flashpoint itself is a pretty big accomplishment, I think, for Aaron Monitor. Now, mm -hmm. they have to definitely take that energy, move it forward, not get complacent. To, right. You know, you, you take them down. And now you can't let yourself, you know, be vulnerable for the, right. these teams kind of trying to fight you down from your seating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, we're going to have to see, though, where they are going for map one to see what well, another map bans to see how it is. They're actually going to try follow up from this Frozen Guard and Stone Keep, of course, is going to be the first two Timber Mill and Ascension Peak following okay. up soon after that. So bands it is that we see not as often in other leagues, but they are bands that are actually that's a good point i'm actually going to bring up i haven't really seen people ban timber mill some teams just definitely don't want to play against the snipers it makes mm. sense and nothing standard banned so i'd expect us to be going somewhere probably pretty standard for oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't consider that super standard by now but it is a sniper map after seeing a sniper map banned i think it would make sense maybe to try to take them there get them a little uncomfortable this is a standard kind of a 2-2 two -two usual style of map you really don't want to leave your flank side danger open for for tanks to just push through freely if you go right. triple dps you kind of have a very weak part of that side of the map so teams maybe want to just make sure it's standard don't want anything kind of cheesy potentially to come out from the other team yeah i mean they go for the first two bands here on air monitor side they get rid of the vivian they get rid of the genos don't want to have that damage buff there aerial arise in response atlas and talus of course the four characters are off of the board now the vivian genos i can understand but once again the atlas i can also understand but talus there's a, it's a bit of wait, a wait, 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 said, <laughs> i think i've said my piece about this talus i really haven't seen a talus do well in any he gets picked and he'll do like 
medium to okay. <laughs> That's really it. I, I really do want them to kind of find another band for this, maybe find a, a more of a counter to I it. It seems like they already have it because he gets countered when he gets picked. Right. Maybe there's just some other layer to the draft versus the Talus that I'm not picking up, but <laughs> I, I I do want them to kind of drift away from that. I think they could take away more from the enemy team than just mm. banning Talus. I completely understand. I, I, I mean, I, I completely understand where you're coming from, too. Yeah. I mean, you have these hit scan targets. Of course, on Aramonor's side, you have Victor, high prioritization, of course, whether it be Victor, Vivian, or Atara. Out. Vivian's off the board, so they're going to take Victor instead in this case. And we have the Ash, we have the Khan in response as well. Aaron Monner opens that up with the Makoa. They didn't get rid of the Makoa. The Torvald, of course, still open, you but really we're going to try and see this prioritization stranger. of Makoa, I believe, personally. I, I, I can imagine that people want to take that over the Torvald since he's just going to be pretty much bubble bot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the Makoa will be able to do a lot of pressure, can kind of dash in from danger and then get a hook out of window if someone's a little overcommitted there. Victor first pick is going to be great for Aaron Monner. I mean, we've talked, we, we all know how good Victor is on console, but he, Victor's really good on Frog Isle in general. He used to be picked a little bit more. I think now in on PC, game, it's more like focus on the snipers because of how no good Strix ground. is in general. But Victor used to be a really strong pick, being able to chase with grenades over the walls, barrage hitting people when they back up. There's just not a lot of ways to get away from the damage that he brings. <laughs> right, I agree with that too. I mean, they ought to go for the Eevee. They ought to go for the Leon. Eevee we don't typically see, but we've seen it a lot more recently because of the fact that I feel like console players are open up to being able to take this yeah. Eevee. We have seen it a couple times before. We saw it Go last ahead. week a lot. Keep We're seeing it this week a lot. Can. Leon is being picked right after that. Of course, that hit scan presence. Grover and Ruckus too. Now that's interesting. They're going triple front line here. They have the Grover, they have the Victor. Why is that? It's just a good map for it. If you just take three tanks and walk them into them, mm -hmm. it the map is close enough where it's kind of hard to stop. Leon, Goodbye. Eevee, Eevee will be able to maybe Ice Storm to slow down after the first mid, but before ultimates are online, they really don't have a way to slow the pace of Aaron Monner's comp. Right, I mean, I completely understand. I mean, the Fury is going to be able to be coupled with the damage amp. Of course, she's going to be able to help rush him down, but at the same time, though, these guys look great on paper. However, we don't know how they're actually going to end up fighting in game one. Take us away, casters. Thank you very much, gentlemen. A great Monday morning about to kick off down here. Dolson and Gormizer on the first set of the day. Get a little Frog Isle, too. I know Yay. you and I were both very excited about this. Uh, this is another lopsided matchup standings-wise. Aerial Arise, though, throwing a bit of a curveball. Don't always get to see Eevee on console, uh, but she certainly has a home here on Frog Isle. Not only does she have a home here, but she is a difference maker on Frog Isle. I mean, you're looking at a composition. Granted, if you ignore the triple triple tank, you just look at Victor. Maybe if you have a sniper back there, like if Strix was ever played. But, like, someone kind of back there, I'm going to use the phrase in the pocket, in window, they're just sitting there sniping so more or less. Eevee's your free ticket to go get him. And right. that's exactly what Aerial Arise are going to be doing. This Victor probably going to be the number one target. The problem is getting past the beef wall that is built up in front of yeah. this victor. Yeah, that's a, that's a big, big if for Ariel Arise. And expect Air Miner to play the way they are here. They just fight from the point. Got enough tankiness to stay alive. And they have first blood to top it all off. Here's your kill starting to cascade, faded from the background. Started to come to the forefront of this region. He's one of the better DPS players. And certainly helps that his team wins most of their games. Only one loss in the hands of Flashpoint, but already forced back. 81% for Aaron Monner. Grenade goes out, shrapnel, little extra damage around the corner. A couple shots missing from Parislay. Point number one over to Aaron Monner. Yeah, and I mean, exactly like what you said going on at the beginning of that, where it's just they're gonna fight from the point and good luck moving them. That's yeah. really going to be the play style for them is, is objective-wise, you have to kill Makoa, you have to kill Inara, and then if you're able to get through those two with, you know, three people left standing, you have to kill the Ruckus and the Victor and the Griffin. Like, there's just a lot that of damage sound fun, supplemented <laughs> with a lot of tankiness up at the front. And they are not holding back. I mean, they're kind of enveloping, enveloping yep. Aerial Arise very early on on ramp. A little bit of aggression from Khan. They back up, and he's the one who dies. He doesn't actually get yeah. any pressure from that. It's a good wall. Actually mitigates a good bit of the presence that Ariel Arise had. First round of ultimates starting to get ready. Whirlwind ready to go if they choose to need it. And they do choose to throw that one out. That's a good Ice Storm. Going to get some cripple and some damage in. First kill, though, for Ernest. Hexafire buys him that one out of the ice block. Is Parasite looking for some damage in this game. Only finds death, though. Everything rolling Aaron Monner's way. Overpower maybe pulls something back. Gets him a kill. Commanders, or uh, Battle Shout, rather. Buys him a little bit of time, but inching ever closer to the final spot is the payload. 
I mean, they've been able to force some ults. There's going to be the Assert Dominance. It's going to land right on the mark that it needs to at least be able to stall and buy some time here. Alex Kidd has been known for this in the past, and it's good to see him at least being able to kind of keep that frontline presence going. They find themselves another kill. Eevee's going to get aggressive with it. That might not be the right call. I like Parasite backing off here. Because at this point, you just got to burn 50 seconds. On Frog Isle, this is notoriously difficult, though. I mean, even 50 seconds feels like an eternity, especially with how close the payload are. Yeah, that, this is the first time the payload's really stopped ever since they captured it. It had been moving in the right direction if you're Aaron Monner. First few rounds of ultimates get used there into the ice block. Not long enough for Parasite. So now you got a 4v5 fighting downhill as Aaron Monner. Three ultimates could be used here. Good hook. It's going to lock up Khan over here on the right, melting that health bar. Last hit goes to Blade. This one might just roll on through. I don't know if anyone's healthy enough to get down and contest, at least not in range. Calculated from Aaron Monner, put him up 2 up. Now I think you're also starting to see maybe some of the issues that, that plagues the EV here. Parasite maybe not hitting the cooldowns exactly the way he wants to every time, so some engagements go picture perfect for EV, and some engagements go, I'm yeah. in, oh, I got an ice block and I'm not getting out of this alive because there's just enough hit scan from the Ruckus and the Victor that you're going to get traced. You can't just soar out of here unless you've got a significant chunk of soar speed in your loadout. So you're going to get caught out. And, I mean, you're able to get three kills, two of them. One of them was an overpower, and then the other two came through at about the same time that defense did. But that's all you were able to pick up. Yeah, and that, those are all defensive kills, and... and that's the only spot. There was there was one moment where Ariel Arise were able to force Aaron Monner back. Everything else has been all offense all day for the blue team in this matchup. Ice Storm rings true in the back. Whirlwind counters it out, though. Yeah, you're going to get some healing, but no damage just yet off the side. Luckily, you have Wormhole. You can blink over. This is where you want to be. You want to be in the grill of Victor, but not when he's winning the engagement anyway. Great start here from Aaron Monner. And the EV just hasn't quite hit the mark. And that was one of those moments that it, I wasn't watching the cooldowns closely enough. I don't know if Soar was available, yeah. but that's one of those Soar don't blink moments, right? right? Because with Wormhole, you blink up, you can't blink back anymore. If you blink back, you're falling off the map. Like it's just having to kind of focus on that. Unfortunately, this EV not hitting the mark, but it's also just difficult. I mean, they don't have a, a composition right now that burns through. Aaron Manor. The Eevee is really good against the Victor, but she's not getting back there. She's not able to focus on him. Yeah. Leon can do a ton of damage against the front lines, but I don't know, you know, where we're seeing this kind of get focused on. And so Anara's been left virtually uncontested on the point the entire time. Yeah, it's, it's been just way too much to burn through. I mean, that's the uh, that's the bonus of these triple frontline compositions, especially when your three frontliners can do a good bit of damage as well. Faded doing just what he needs to do, staying alive, providing the rest over to his team. Up 3-0 over Ariel Arise. Kills continuing to fall out. Ten seconds left on the EV respawn. Alex Kidd had a great assert dominance that helped save things last time. Going to look for that here. No stun. They do get the inflame on the back end to try to force some defensive power here. Doesn't quite happen. That's an enlightenment. Rips through quicks. Faded. Another good defense from Ariel Arise, but this is what we saw last time, Gore. They were able to push him back once, and then Aaron Monner fight right right back on through. And when you look at it, it makes a lot of sense as to where that pushback comes from. Not only a good assert dominance from Alex Kidd, but an inflame that all tackles into that to give them that damage amp to, to be able to burn through. It really is just big health bars, not enough maybe shield breakage right. in their loadout, and or just in their, their draft, I guess, in general, as well as the fact that even at this point, I mean, 3-0, you haven't got enough credits to really max up your wrecker. And Makoa, Ruckus, like you said, you've got tanks there that deal just enough damage that are going to cause a lot of trouble. And there's only one wrecker on the team to try and burn through it. So you have this Leon who's kitted only to deal with Ruckus. And I don't see her getting there like half yeah. the time just because he's playing over there with the Inara. You have Makoa coming up on the side. Like they're just playing this really, really well from Aaron Manor. A well, quick pause first to look at the blue crew for the day, Gormizer and Dolson down in here. And this is what we've come to expect, though, from Aaron Monner. And you look back to split number one, they were kind of falling by the wayside a lot yeah. in this region, not not really at the forefront of a lot of these conversations. And now they're able to keep pace with Flashpoint. And, and you know, we're, we're kind of rounding out here. Only 
four or five weeks left to really secure that spot, and this one's up in the air. That's what I like to see, though, is, is that that concept of, like, you know what, we stuck through it, like, we yeah. maybe made some changes coming through, but, like, at this point, Aaron Manor has gone from, you are very solidly second place, but now you are contending for first. Like, Here. they've done what every second place team in console wants to do, which is finally stuck it to the team right above them. That's right. Not something we were able to say very frequently. I mean, the last split, the conversation was Flashpoint lost a map <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to uh, to Stush twice. But but other than that, nothing. They do lose one game, uh, though, to Aaron Miner this split. So that's a big one to look at. Aaron Miner grabbed game one here on Frog Isle. Big, big performance out of them. Steamroll, 4-0, triple yeah. front line, doing its job. Very 4 oval map, though. So yes, it's definitely true. one of those things. Draft in their favor, map in their favor. They played it really, really well as well. So pretty yep. much everything kind of stacked up on one side here. The scales were not favorable towards Aerial Arise, which is going to be more interesting to see how exactly they shift the right. dynamic. I mean, you can see three streaks were the highest they got. A few kills, I think maybe six to ten total right. that they were able to pick up through this entire time. And ten is the lowest streak for Aaron Manor. Well, you can see just how in favor of Aaron Monner the scales were here. Ernest at 50,000 damage. That was good for third in the game. And anytime you can have those frontliners doing that, you'll be happy. Undying for Filet, 6-0, 14. Good healing coming out from the Grover as well. Every slash line is pretty. That's indicative of a 4-0. I really like, I think, where Ernest was playing throughout that entire time. You know, Faded, you expect to do well, 5-2 and 19. But having that ruckus not only come through and play the angles he was playing, kind of get right. the, the amount of damage he was doing. And he did it all for free. 6, 2, and 10 It's exactly the spot you wanted him to be at. And, and I, I really like, and we're seeing this in PPL too, I like seeing Ruckus start to kind of swing back into the meta. Yeah. I know that, you know, he has some of his counters. Cassie's a big conversation surrounding the Ruckus and things like that. But he's starting to get a lot of play and doing pretty well. As well, it was, you know, again, two deaths, two deaths, Two deaths, one death, but then there's the whopping goose egg there and the, yep. deuce, the, the death column, and that was filleted. And this is just, we've been talking a lot more, especially in the PPL lately, because of how phenomenal the support players yes. are, how much support has been making a difference. Yeah. This is one of those support players. This is that kind of performance where it's just like the damage he does, the healing he's doing, and then just the, maybe the kills he's able to pick up on the right. side, whatever he's doing that allows that to happen just makes your team win that much harder. And I know I know support players probably love the fact that we're in this meta now where we're, we're giving them a lot of love, and it's for good reason. They make big differences. That's yeah. a perfect example. I mean, it's 6-0-12. It's you're going to be hard-pressed to find a win if you're the other team if you can't kill off the enemy healer even once. Great start from Aaron Miner grabbing game one, 4-0 on Frog Isle. Game two, just a sec. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Console League. Welcome back in, guys. Aaron Monitor decided to take the first match. Frog Isle, a very quick 4-0. Very, very little contesting coming out from Ariel Arise, but at the same time, you got to deal with that triple front line. You got to deal with the Victor, the Grover, everyone all around on Aaron Monitor's team was just looking a little bit too spicy for Ariel Arise to be able to deal with. So tough to burn through that that triple tank Grover sustain, yeah. especially on a map where you can play so close. I mean, and, and they even had, um, Faded had 
almost 100% kill participation. He had 24 yeah. kills and assists together with 25 deaths in the game from the other side. So unless I miss someone jumping off the map mm. without getting shot beforehand, right. he, he almost got a part of every kill. So so hard to kind of get away from him when he's right. you know applying that much pressure with that. But good start for Aaron Monner. We're going to be moving Ariel Arise's map now after right. that. So they might be able to go to a place where that triple front line won't be a factor. But honestly, there's not really a lot of maps where that, that's true. Right, yeah. I mean, we'll have to see where they want to respond to that Frog Isle, though, of course. We're looking at map two already for game two. Jaguar Falls, very, very interesting. Of course, keeping these first two maps, of course, being ones that are very, very close together. So we'll have to see how Ariel arise since, you know, they did end up picking the second one, the second map in game two. We'll have to see how they want to respond and how they're going to adjust their draft to be able to try and counteract what Aaron Monitor's doing. Guys, we just got destroyed by Triple Tank. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Well, I don't know, I mean, man. Jaguar Falls, sure. <laughs> this is a, traditionally a terrible triple tank map, so, you know, it's definitely... No, I mean, it, it's another map for it, potentially, if they want to go that way. There is a little bit more distance to Kite as opposed to Frog Isle, but they also do have first pick. They, ha they have some right. options to get that draft for themselves, but Aramara, they I mean, they ended with the triple tank. They got it late. It's not like it was a contested thing. We'll have to see what happens. Bands, kind of similar. Atlas Talus for the Your second pick, but Willow safe. Victor... Your for Ariel Arise instead. Sick. I think more for what like think you burning. Are. They want to get rid of that point burning right. kind of pick, Victor and Willow. So now getting Vivian, they could actually go like an Inara and something else kind of stationary and try to control the objective as their primary focus. At the same time, though, I mean, I feel like, you know, Tyro's, of course, still open. I don't of know course. if I don't know if Aramon will want to counter with that. And I was about to mention Grover. Grover is this is another good map that Grover can play on because of the fact that everyone's really close together. Jaguar Falls has that close quarters, very, very comfortable kind of play style it is that you can play if you want to go for Form that. Ash is being picked, though. So that's, you know, that's going to be a lot of sustainability on Ariel Arise's side. And then, of course, they're thinking about who it is they're going to try and go for this fifth pick. And that's Spakoa. I like that. I mean, double off tank again again for them. It didn't work mm. great last time, but I think they yeah. definitely have better better tanks. I mean, having Makoa specifically is, is really big if Aaron Monarch do go a frontline heavy composition again. Makoa is one of the best tanks to have the against the wild. triple tank. Right. Because if you, if you have enough damage, you could just keep running away and then hook a tank in, get them away from the, the team that can peel for them and keep them alive. That's one of the best ways to kind of equalize that health engagement. Aaron Monarch in Nara and Tyra. Good mm. to see Tyra again. I, I do wonder what legendary, what talent they're going to be right. picking. Because we've seen Burn Monster. Haven't seen Mercy Kill yet. I feel like there is some merit to that, though. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, well, actually, on PPL, I thought I was with, I think I was on desk or I was on cast with Nick. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it, and we, and, we, and we were like, did he take Burn Monster? No, somebody actually took Mercy Kill for the okay. for, for the three charge uh, grenade launcher. So it's possible. We saw it. We saw it in PPL as well. Bidey, so, I mean. Bidey used to love that. Yeah. That was, that mean, was Bidey's thing. He ran damage reduction on, on grenade damage. and a limb You're reset. He just constantly hug. chained it. Ariel's comp ended very different than I thought it would. Mave Genos, so kind of a yeah, more that tidy damage-focused comp. And Aaron Monner ended up being the, the tank, the comp that's going to burn point. Overpower to equalize yeah. a fight immediately. And Tyra BK on this map is scary. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really dangerous. I mean, if they decide to go hunting party, it's going to be bad. I mean, at the same time, Aaron Monitor, their team's looking really, really good. Aerial Rise is definitely looking like they're going to struggle a little bit this game. But, of course, we'll have to see if that's going to be true in game two. Well, drafts. Maybe a little bit more to even off of the board. You still get some front line for Aerial Rise in the form of Makoa. Big game changer there. And Aaron Monitor going with the Tyra yeah. as well as the Bomb King. We don't get to see Tyra all that often, so I'm sure talent selection will be something to keep your eyes out for as we jump into map, and then Bomb King as well. This is a great map for him. It'll be really interesting to see if she's running, if she is running Hunting Party, which is something that has kind of been nerfed coming into this update. Burn Monster is actually something I advocate on this map. Yep. I think it works really well because of the way the Fire Bomb can kind of, you can control its spread in the hallways, like the staircases, so you can maybe factor that in. It is going to be Burn Monster. I was also going to talk about Mercy Kill because, I mean, what feels more console than just grenade launching everybody? At least yeah, in my I'm mind, that, that. that really brings me back to when I played on my Xbox. So fits perfectly fine here, but this is this is her realm. This is where she wants to live. Yeah, it's a good zone as well for Aaron Monner to start off Jaguar Falls. Nobody from Aerial Arise has been able to even move forward without getting poked out. Faded a big reason for that, a good wall as well from the Inara blocked off one side. This is where Burn Monster will do a good bit of damage if we're able to find a good firebomb into these close small, or these close quarters, small areas, you know? Cripples as well, you can't use Shell Spin to get out of there, or anything like that. First blood to Ernest, and first point to Aaron Monner. And that's just good zoning. I mean, just being able to kind of pick this up, 
Makoa doing about anything he can over here. There's not much you can do in that position after the point. He stood there and captured. was healthy. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately for him, that's going to end up spelling his doom. Ernest. I mean, Ernest is one of my one of those players that I just enjoy watching. Yeah. Like, I think through time that I've watched him on console, it's always been fun. It's always been interesting to see the stuff he's going to be able to pull out. And this is just another one. I mean, going from what was it, Ruckus last game to Bomb King this game, two distinctly different play styles. Yeah. And so far, rocking both of them. Both looking good. As mentioned, one kill at the very end of that first point capture. Aaron Monner just did a much better job of zoning out Aerial Arise from moving forward at all. That's a good kill from Alex Kidd there to pull one back onto Aaron Monner. Once that Vivian's able to sit back and just start winding up, it's going to be tougher to push. And a look at Maeve here in this game as well. We got an EV last game for Aerial Arise and a Maeve this time around. And Certainly has her merits and one of the first examples and a couple examples of her in the console league. And, I mean, self-damage amp, it's going to be able to do a lot. And you're looking at those daggers, you hit all four of them, you're going to be hitting 2,000 damage. That's going to yeah. be the, the biggest thing is finding those moments. I mean, against a Tyra, she's pretty tanky. The same thing for Bomb King. Actually, two of Ooh, the tankiest stun. DPS that you have here. So it's going to be a little difficult for Maeve to burn them down, but yep. it's still good damage that's going to leave them kind of hurting and wishing for more. They need some of that damage right now. A good volley of ultimates from Aaron Monner opened up this fight. Not able to pull anything back. One kill from the Maeve is going to keep Ariel Arise at least somewhat in it, but Aaron Monner now gets his payload moving forward again. They have the overpower, have Whirlwind through time and space, connects a Whirlwind back on respawn for five seconds. Now they're able just to poke out. You can see Quick's faded last game was pretty much free and clear the entire time to spread out that damage. But maybe this time around, forcing him back. Darren Monner goes searching one more time. Maybe one more push could do it. Overpower could open something up. A kill onto Maeve as well. Might force him back. Ernest starting to hit those bombs just a little bit more consistently. Burn Monster is going to force everyone from Aerial Arise back. Overtime's going to begin. They get the Makoa killed off as well, so this becomes a little bit more difficult without that front line. I mean, a couple good bombs here could absolutely find some kills, and there's going to be one of them for Ernest as they continue going forward. And You know, we were talking about swaps from champion to champion, but from Eevee to Ash is not something you typically see Paris Slay. Going to get slayed right there, and this payload's still moving forward. Yeah, it's going to re require a shell spin in there. Good bombs from Ernest. Seal up point number two for Aaron Monner. Five, two, and three for the BK, and this was the, the great seismic crash that opened up this fight. Rotation at the end, stuns up two, and then a little bit of sneaky damage from the Inara. Did get some help from Quicks Faded over there to the right, but uh, you know, once those stones start hitting, it gives you a little bit extra. And unintentionally, based on the way he turned away from the wall, yeah, I, I Parasley tried to dash through the small gap between, well, Inara wall and map wall. Did not work for him then. And I believe that's when King Nick and some others turned on him to be able to stack up one of those four kills. But we saw two moments of that. They were able to pick it up for Aaron Manor, but there's a certain point, actually, once you kind of break into the base and it becomes a little bit more open, that's where Burn Monster Tyra starts to kind of dissipate in its effectiveness because yep. there's so much more room to just maneuver around the fire. You're just like, okay, cool. I won't stand there now. I'll just walk three feet to the left. Yep. And... uh Paris Slade used some of that mobility, trapped behind the Inar wall, but able to pull one back, which I think was pretty important here. For the first time, really, in two games, Ariel Arise is starting to take over this mid-fight, get themselves some point percentage. Aaron Monner looking for one more fight. You hooked in the Inar. I'm not sure that's where you want to be. Going down to double digits, stays alive, though. A little bit of healing from his team, and now it's the Genos who has to force back. Midnight, the Veil covers Jaguar Falls here, looking for some kills. Venator finds number one, but Ernest is able to answer back. Quick's faded, drops the firebomb down at the ground, but an ancient raging Makoa is going to rip through Aaron Monner's lineup as King Nick dashes forward in the first point of the set for Ariel Arise. And that was Aaron Manor kind of losing track of the timing on that, as well as just Ariel Arise playing it well. That's the first time they got any percentage on the point, so it's good that it did go forward to the capture. But the problem is, is how can they handle the aggression? This is going to be the first time they kind of pick up that mantle yep. for this set. And they played it really well, but they dumped, you know, three ultimates to get there. A Midnight, an Ancient Rage, and an Assert Dominance. 
All of which should be able to come back for the end of the round, but you're going to have to make some decent payload progress yep. before you're willing to drop them. Aaron Monar trying to say no way to that. Your time and space opens the door. <laughs> Unfortunately, off the map goes Parasley, who followed up on the through time and space, didn't find too much. And off the map he goes. Quick faded rips through Venator, and there's one more kill for your Tyra. And you know what? We're, we're, we're able to look through it. I'd love to be able to see the Tyra's loadout at this point, just to see what it's running, because Burn Monster doesn't come too often. Volatile makes sense. Reduce the cooldown, have Firebomb more. Yeah, it seems good. And I was wondering if he's going to run any kind of damage reduction. He's not standing in his own fire, but there is a card that allows you to, you know, at least reduce self-damage if it so pleases you. So you could potentially chase some of the kills through your flames, but he's not going to be running it here. It's going to be more just focused on, well, what you would expect. Get kills and burn them down as it comes through. And that's kind of the big difference. You know, if you look at Hunting Party, it's team-based. Yep. We're all going to do more damage. If you look at Mercy Kill, it's I'm going to have damage reduction. So I'm already the highest health DPS character in the game. Right. Now it's even harder to kill me. And then Burn Monster is, you know what, Makoa? Say bye-bye to that 10k health. And, and, and you know, I mean, it, she, I think is still in a viable spot in the right yeah. scenarios. I mean, Hunting Party was the big draw, but now we've seen a little bit of everything. I remember seeing some Mercy Kill. I remember seeing some Burn Monster. Not going to see it too much in this fight. A double kill from Alex Kidd. Knocks Aaron Monner back, especially when you lose your healer. And one of your main DPSs in Venator following up on some of that frontline presence. And for the first time in this set, Ariel Orion showing some life here. Knocking on the door of a tying point. And the burn monster, you see how much damage that potentially does here. Five seconds left, overtime will begin. Aaron Monarch could pull it to one final point with some kills here, but Ernest been quiet since the start. Just nobody in range to get a touch on overtime. That's unfortunate because it was looking great for Ariel Rise for a moment. That's one of those awkward moments, and we've seen and we saw it a lot on Friday. I mean, you were casting Navi Renegades, where it's just yeah. you, you got to keep track of the timer you have and what that means for where you're standing. Like, where is that in relation to the objective? And you can't forget about it. It's just one of those moments where if you forget about it, you are fighting on the side. You could even be winning the fight on the yep. side. But it doesn't matter if no one's standing there to keep overtime going. And now you've given a 3-1 lead to the team that's kind of been in control yep. the entire time. You had a really good mid-fight. Three. Last round, you have all of those tools in your arsenal again and the comeback mechanic once again enabled for you. So everything, you know, like, was it lightning striking twice or are, are you going to just have that, that one moment right. live forever? Well, the, the zone from Aaron Monner at the first point was so great, and that's a good combo of ultimates. Parasley pairs up with the through time and space. All the kills cascading for Ariel Arise here, Ernest. If you're able to pull anything back, it's just a little bit extra, but gets poppy bombed off the side by Ernest. A small play there that could give them a chance to fight back into this one, but as you mentioned, still comeback mechanic for them. 70% for Ariel Arise. One dismount maybe on the opposite side. Overpower going just wide. Looks like Ariel and Rise are going to get themselves on the board yet again. And they played that so well. Like one of the things that I would argue is the hallmark of a good team. It's not just can you use your ults to get to, to win a point. It's how well do you use them together, and that's what comes through. Is that a certain dominance done into a through time and space to make sure it connects kind of deal? The, the knockback fighting in that room. Like Ariel and Rise play this map really well. They know Jack Falls. I can tell that mm -hmm. from how they're approaching these mid fights. So Aaron Manor, I mean, this is one of those moments where the inconsistencies, I'd say, of Burn Monster are maybe going to shine a little brighter. You can't control it. It's an RNG spread on that firebomb. And so you just kind of have to hope that not only do you land it in a position where it's going to tick them down low enough, but that they're going to stand there, that they're going right. to be there long enough, and that it spreads to that area. It's just a lot of little kind of uncontrollable factors in that that make it a little shaky. You know, and I mentioned that, you know, with Maeve as well, we're not super used to seeing her in a lot of our console league games, but I think Fabrice has played a pretty good Maeve throughout this game. Not the craziest streaks on his side, but yeah, I mean, for fourth damage in the game, just behind a, a Tyra and a Bomb King, it's nothing to uh, nothing to take for granted there at 5, 6, and 10. 9, 4, and 8 for Alex Kidd. The big reason Ariel and Rise are still in this one. Venator as well having an easier time on the front line on the Makoa here. 
Chance to tie. Payload moving forward. Another missed overpower from King Nick. Missed one on the defense last time, but it ended up not mattering. But now it's back off cooldown. Misses another one. So that's not even going to be ready for the next mid fight if this one starts to go through very quickly. And they're forced all the way back. I'm not sure anybody's in range to get a yeah. touch, and nobody is. And now you're at a 3 3. You do have 54% on your overpower. But it's going to come up at the back end of this mid, and Aerial Rise still have some of their important ultimates up. And they're just about to get that Ancient Rage, which has been kind of not the saving grace. It hasn't been the one thing winning it, but Mako has been able to do a lot with that compared to the first round of the game. And this is Ernest. Like, this is back, literal back against the wall, doing whatever he can, just fighting while Boop. he has the opportunity. A good little poppy bomb. And if he, if he had... I want to give him maybe 600 more health there, like yeah. just like a, a one Grover heal Five, through the wall. Four, he gets two more heals, I think. Two, I think he continues that tear, and maybe we see a different fight. But as of now, that performance, it's the only one that's truly standing out here for Iron Manor compared to last game. And Ernest is, is kind of keeping them afloat. And if the rest of the team step up, they should still be able to find a win. God, these through time and spaces have been connecting every single time. It's the healer again. And now it's your damage dealer. Another double kill for Alex Kidd might just seal up this game for Ariel Arise. 33% for Aaron Monitor. You don't have fast cap this time around. So still a chance to fight back for the red side. King Bomb, Crossfire, Whirlwind, Seismic Crash. Everything's ready for them. Midnight and Ancient Rage. All that's readily available for Ariel Arise. So look towards that. If they're able to fight back through here, they might have to burn some ultimates just to get back near the point. Alex Kidd with the roundabout route here. King Bomb is going to start. It's going to end up catching. Venator, but the Ancient Rage shrugs that one off. If they're able to kill the Makoa, that's at least a little bit helpful. Midnight drops down as well. Aaron Monner at a 5v3, Ooh. now a 4v3 advantage. Looking for the flank here around Alex Kidd. He's going to win that engagement. A certain dominance as well from Paris Lay. Always used, and that's a double kill for the Ash. Now Aaron Monner with a chance to zone, and they're already at 75%. I mean, it's almost perfect for them setting it up. I just want to throw out how great these bomb throws have been coming down from Ernest. Very good call on the ult, very good hits, but now they have to do it one more time. Overtime's going to be here, and he needs to get a kill on this mate. Overtime for the game. Overpower does catch that time for Brees and Venator, though, have a couple of kills. Overtime burning away. It's going to be on King Nick to move forward. He's already used the battle shot. A double kill from the Khan may have just kept their team in it. Commander's grab sends Paris Lay over and around. Shoulder bash goes through. A double kill from the Mave may have sealed the game. And Ariel Arise find themselves a map win. Really good zone. It doesn't break down as Mave versus Bomb King, but there's a significant moment there where a couple of bombs are going to the right of Mave. Mave's daggers hit Bomb King in the gut. And that trade really opened it up for Ariel Arise to move everyone in at that point. The overpower finally connecting, really, really solid, yep. but there's not enough health bar, not enough healing. Full aid got picked off a few times throughout that fight and the round prior where yep. just all of a sudden there's no Grover to heal. That's a good showing for Ariel or Eyes. Yeah. I mean, you look at Frog Island, how fast that one was top to bottom. I mean, over almost as soon as that one started. So getting a map win here and a convincing one at that. You get kind of even compositions as far as damage dealers, tanks, no triple tank, anything like that. And you win in just a straight-up battle. Alex Kidd, big game from him, 134,000 damage. That'll put him about 20,000 above anyone else in this one. And honestly, I don't even know where, where to start picking it apart because, like, the numbers on the side of Aaron Manor look pretty good. King Nix is lower than I think you would want to see from your con, about 2,000 below the Inara. The 3-8 and eight slash line definitely didn't help that, along with the missed yeah. overpowers on the defenses that one of them maybe you can ignore because they still got the defense, but the other one yep. definitely mattered. It's those kind of plays, those moments, using it, not getting a kill out of it, using it and, and not getting anything out of it is even worse. So there were a lot of moments where maybe clean, King Nick cleans it up. It could be different. And Burn Monster, is, as much as I like to advocate it on this map, just yeah. didn't, didn't hit the way I think you wanted it to. I think Lou uh, on Ariel Arise's side at 3, 0, and 28. And all three of those? It's a 31 streak. Those are all through time Snipes. and spaces. Uh, for Brees, though, on the Mave, I mentioned, you know, kind of in and out of the meta here in the console league at 10, 7, and 13. Hitting those daggers consistently and really helped push Ariel Arise forward. And this one, even at low health, I mean, you can see the, the aggression still there. Double kill seals up the game and how important that one was. I mean, so many moments where it's those daggers hitting. I mean, we had, I had mentioned it earlier, where it's just like when you're in a, a boxing match with Bomb King, that damage is going to make a significant 
difference. And that's that moment right there where Fabrice is able to get rid of Ernest. If Ernest is able to connect with two bombs, which admittedly, I don't even know if he had the time to do so, then maybe you have a different fight because Bomb King's still there controlling yep. something. But Maeve being as maneuverable as she was, slips the daggers in and then just slips around every other bullet that comes her way like it's the Matrix right. and she's perfectly <laughs> fine. And that, that's tough for Aaron Miner. I mean, you, you go down early, they use all their ultimates, you're fighting back, it looks like you're going to be able to zone, you get yourself to 99%, but then the re-engage starts to come out, the assert dominance comes up at the right time. That second wave of ultimates was so important there for Ariel Horizon. Yeah. Helps them find win number one here in this set. Tiebreaker right after this. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins console league. Well, if you're an Ariel Arise fan, you are more than happy right now. They were able to take their game off of the second seed in the league. That's not easy. Aaron Monner does end up losing Jaguar Falls on Ariel Arise's map pick, which now evens up the score at 1-1. And I'm excited to see. I don't know if Ariel Arise is going to be able to take it overall, Chris Dick, but I'm excited to see how they're going to be able to adapt from this point on. I mean, honestly, if you can take Jaguar Falls, you can take almost any map. I mean, Jag yeah. is, is different in the sense that you can play almost anything on it, but it really is like the standard map if, if you go there and you can take it as long as you have the other maps at least somewhat in your head you should be able to take anything else at least skill wise yeah i mean we're gonna have to see though where they're up they're gonna opt to go for game three we're gonna see what the third map pick is for this entire set ice mines now that's interesting we've seen the typical the the usual three suspects already we've seen the frog Isles, we've seen the jaguar falls and now we're looking at the young ice mines i like to see it is this the third usual suspect? Uh, I mean, well, we see it. Well, Bright we, Marsh, I would say. Bright, well, yeah, br I mean, Bright Marsh, yeah, but at the same time, we see we see Ice Mines brought out a lot more because, I mean, you mentioned it before, Nick has, Gore has, I mean, I think every, everyone has that. Everyone is literally starting to adapt to Ice yeah. Mines. So I've seen Ice Mines more than I've seen, I think I've seen both them and Bright Marsh about even. So I guess third yeah, teams, and fourth you're respectively. You're not wrong, you're not wrong. Teams yeah. are definitely picking it quite a bit now that they're, they're figuring it out. And, if you want to slow down a set, it's the place to go. Right, if, exactly. If neither team are, are able to execute that that push, then it's going to take so, a very long time for the map to go in general. Most of the time, it'll have an easier defense for that team. So it's definitely a good place to kind of reset a right. set, especially if you think you should have the lead. You go here, you kill the momentum, and then you say, all right, well, we think we're the better team, Heroes so incoming. we'll take it and we'll run with it from there. Atlas Talos, again, the second ban from Ariel Rise, and Vivian Makoa from Aaron Monner. So they do get Victor on their own side. Victor really solid on this map yeah I great agree. at playing in the windows not because it's he's particularly great at these like closer it's, it's kind of a closer engagement normally you want to give him a little bit more distance but because of how Come open on, the mid fight is fight. it's so hard to cross and get to him yeah. ash is definitely one of the characters that can do that though that could shoulder bash across and get onto the victor but it's not it's not guaranteed with with how much open space you have to cover yeah, I, I mean, I completely agree with that. Willow and Ash being picked on Ariel Ariza's side. Khan, in this case, being the response, the third and fourth picks are going to end up being, sorry, not third and fourth, the fourth and, no, 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 it is the third and fourth pick, sorry. Yeah, I'm all over the place right now. Don't mind me, just mine was actually what's happening. Khan and Genos are going to be picked on their side. I mean, you have the Luminary buff, of course. We see Genos so, so prevalent. We'll probably see him ban more on console than in like PML, than PPL because of 
being able to buff those hit scans is going to be huge. And yeah. I, I, I like the fact that Aramon are opted to go for this, especially on Ice Mines. I think it'll be easier to hit those Thomas. Yeah, they already have two hit scans, too. So, I mean, having having that pressure is, is huge. Daniel's also able to dismount through the gates if they want to do that. But I can't ignore Ariel Arise's draft so far. I mean, they have two of the better characters for Ice Mines, Willow, Tyra, especially if they're on Burn Monster. That's another kind of zoning tool for those choke points that you have to force your way through. Terminus kind of been stalwart on console. Uh, I know I know there's some like aim assist with when his siphon's up. I think it's kind of difficult to track onto him and stay onto him, so it gives him a bit of an advantage there. So good, great draft, honestly, starting from Aerial Arise. The, the answer with the pit from Arimon is good, but I don't know if it's actually better than the DPSs that Ariel pulled out. Neither do I. I mean, the pip, of course, to, I'm, I'm assuming to be able to counter some of those, I mean, just to counter anyone with evil mojo means that a lot of people will be more scared to be able to fight on that point, but Barrack ends up getting picked up last. You have the Barrack con combo, you have the Terminus Ash, and the Grover to round things out. Whose comp do you like more? I actually like Aerial Arises. I think it's great for Ice Mines. It's so much zoning potential, and they actually have the, like, the only answer to the victor. Well, I mean, I can completely understand that as well. Willow ends up getting picked. The Drogos isn't here, which is a big surprise, okay. especially on Ice Mines. However, we're going to get right into Game 3 and see what both of these teams have in store for us. You know, Gore, I am very excited to see this pip here on Ice Mines. Uh, I, I do agree. I think Ariel Arise has a, a great draft top to bottom. Yeah. But when you have a great evil mojo, it doesn't matter how good your team comp is. If, uh, you know, if Aaron Monner start hitting some of those ultimates properly, their team fight could be just as dangerous. In earnest, you saw a pretty good game from the Bomb King on Jaguar Falls. They do fall in that one. But I don't imagine his pip will be that far off. No, I, I expect this to do a lot of good damage. I think it's going to be able to track it down. Willow right now is the, the hot topic when it comes down to it. And I think Tyra, I mean, I talked about Burn Monster last time. Kresnik mentioned it. But Ice Mines, there's very specific choke points you have to break through in order to, to get back. If Ariel Arise win the first fight, I think they win every point that they, they get that initial pick. But they have to maintain that control, right? That's going to be the biggest issue for them. And that's going to be kind of on the back of this victor, on the back of this pip, what they can do, how well they perform. They're going to be hanging out together up in the high ground there, cooking up the grenade. Plugged away a little bit of damage. Aerial Arise are on the point first with Ooh. Aaron Monner looking to Ooh. fight back. Some good shots from Faded. Bye-bye, Parasley is now the gates are being stormed. Aaron Monner moving forward. Alex Kidd flexing onto the Ash this time around. King Nick cleans up for Brees on the Willow. 39% still for Ariel Arise. Shatterfall comes down. Trying to get some good damage in onto the barrack, but they are forced back here. Siphon up, charging up some of those Calamity shots. Venator forced back here yet again. And an early tug of war already happening here on this mid. But you can see, that I think the difficulty for Ariel, Ariel Arise to get back in there, you know, sands Faith Flight. If they had a Faith Flight, this is usually something you can very easily come back in for, but. You know, Fabrice has to play window against a victor, which is already not a winning matchup. Now with the barrage coming down, even if that's looking or not looking at you, it's a scary thought. You kind of have to stay under window and, and kind of keep yourself safe. He's down very low here. I think he'll eventually fall off. There's Evil Mojo. Ernest gets one with it, gets a kill, and it's on to Terminus. That's very important here. Fabrice looking for some shots, just some roof shots for some of that AOE damage. Trades out with King Nick, one for one. Blue on the Grover, forced in now to contest on the point, but he's not long for this world. Ernest with a double kill. Late touch from Alex Kidd does not connect, and Aaron Monner hit on the board first. I mean, he's almost there. And to the point where Alex Kidd fighting there, this is an overtime. Maybe you have a different conversation because some of the other, rest of the team maybe can come up and regroup. But it was the perfect timing there for Aaron Manor to just be able to kind of one tap, touch the point, get yep. themselves a payload and now get things rolling pretty smoothly off at the beginning. And as much time as you can on Ice Mines not waste at the very beginning, trying yep. to like win another team fight essentially right at the mid, you get a pretty decent distance on this yep. payload. You got a minute and 45 left. I mean, so often we see mid fight win, but then the, the team response comes back, wins the fight, and then you're zoned out from even touching the payload for the rest of the game. Aaron Miner has not stopped. Since capturing the first point, Quick's faded, burned away, Parasle. I didn't check. I, I think it's Burn Monster again. Yeah. And I, I, that does make sense on this map. Lots of good zone control. Assert dominance. Maybe up down for Alex Kidd. 
he drops back. Aaron Monner has some low health bars here, so this could be a fight Ariel Arise look to take. Ultimate's on the blue side in favor of them at least. There's a kill on the King Nick moving forward. Seven streak for the pip, so at least early on hitting its mark. But for the first time this game, Aaron Monner forced back. Finally being able to kind of find their footing. Really good splash damage, I think, coming down from the Willow. She's not, I want to say, the main factor there winning, but she's been able to stabilize a lot. I was very concerned for Victor yeah. <laughs> there, standing inside of a through time and space. Always feels counterintuitive. Lucky for him, it was his teammates, but it still does end up kind of resulting in his doom. He ends up falling down. And honestly, once you lose him, I feel like a lot of the pushing yep. power kind of goes with him. You can maybe have a retake potential with a good evil mojo, but he, he's the spearhead. Yeah, you're missing that spearhead. So this is more of a traditionalized mind's defense with Ariel Rise winning. Barrage back to 50%. They use the through time and space maybe just as kind of a last effort. You know, if this one connects, maybe it becomes easy enough that we can push it through. I can't imagine they spend way too much to try to get back onto the payload here. Overpower dome shield, very important for that next mid, as well as the evil mojo. Nobody in range to get a touch. Two seconds left on the clock. Aerial Arise find themselves a successful defense and tie up Ice Mines. Not too far-fetched from what I would expect coming in here. And when you look at the slash lines, also not too far-fetched from what you would expect. 5-2-4 and four for Paris Lay. A very good game from him compared to what we have seen the last few. But then 5-2-3 for Ernest, 4-3-2 uh, and two for Quick. And that's two players that are having a significant impact. The rest of the team kind of yet to be heard, but... It's not their job to be hurt, right? They yep. are getting everything else done that is allowing those two to have that slash line. And right now only 21, I can't believe I'm about to say this, only 21,000 damage ahead for the victor. <laughs> but as time goes on, I expect Three, to see that gap two, kind of increase. One. Barrage is almost ready, Evil Mojo's up, as well as a, a Dome Shield and an Overpower. And Overpower is almost only useful here yep. on the mid fight. So you can connect here. Aaron Manor could very easily sweep this one out from under Ariel Arise. Venator dismounts himself a little bit early on. Overpower does connect. Alex Kidd, I think, was looking for maybe a last-ditch effort to get back through. I think that was a fade flight for Fabrice yeah. that just got gunned down by Ernest. And the con on the backside for Aaron Manor. Evil Mojo could connect here. Right now, they're just going to look to the zone. They realize they don't need to use their ultimates just yet, maybe. At the back end here, they get one, they get two chickens, only one gets cooked. Ernest gets the first kill. 72% reanimate use from Venator, but immediately into a barrage. And they drop the dome shoot on the point. Aaron Mon are in a great spot. I mean, being able to find a really good zone, that's 99, that should be 100. And that was, that was exactly what you want out of that, right? It's just, we're gonna get aggressive, then we're gonna get double aggressive, maybe even triple aggressive and you're just not going to have time to get back to yep. the point. We're going to win one fight and then win everything else so hard that you can't <laughs> fathom what the mid fight looks like anymore. You do also get to pull out a few ults. I mean, Fate Flight, I think, being used as early as it did. Aaron Manor just screaming, hit scam, baby, shooting her out yeah, of the sky. Like, I mean, it was just, it was really awkwardly timed. It was, it was so impactful, but for all of the wrong reasons, if you're Ariel, Ariel Arise, because you know, if you if you die, but you don't use Faith Flight, at least you know it's only a death, and maybe you can re-engage with Faith Flight on your way back. But not only do you use it, you get no value out of it, and you die to top it all off. So there was no hope left for any sort of Willow impact. And now it's back on cooldown. You, you don't even get to use it to try to force them back on defense. Aaron Monner unsuccessful pushing last time. They were at least able to get to this point before Ariel Arise put their foot down and said no way. Crossfire, all that's immediately ready for the red side. Through time and space, does connect wow. this time around for Filet. Now Aaron Monner gonna look to get aggressive. No more Willow, no more dead zone. Playing back and forth between his frontliner as Quick's faded. Filet with two kills now in this re-engagement. Aaron Monner moving forward. I don't think it's ever going to get tiring seeing health bars drop that fast. Like sometimes yeah. they just disappear quicker than you can anticipate. That was a grenade, some burst mode victor shots, and then the through time and space kind of is like the cherry on top where it's just like, we're going to delete you in four different ways and you're going to have to deal with it. And it's given them such a hefty lead here. I, I, they do use Evil Mojo as well just to cap that one off. 3-1 for Aaron Monner, looking good for maybe win number two in this set. Five streaks for them. 
And if you look at that uh, 10k damage per minute kind of metric, Quick Spade has thrown that one, or blowing that one way out of the water. Good snipe there from Filet, opens things up, gets a double kill around the back end of this fight. A good start from Aaron Monner. The only thing I don't agree with is how sparingly they use their ults towards the end there. Like, it seemed like they were very solidly in control. Maybe that's only because they use yeah. their ults, but I feel like there's, like, that evil mojo, maybe it was necessary, maybe it wasn't. The same thing could be said for the barrage, for the dome shield that was used, although that was used earlier towards the mid fight. But the overpower, you know, there, there's a few ults that I think would be more beneficial to have well, right now than you would want in the next, uh, during the end of right. that push. And I don't know if they have the tools in their arsenal now to, to fully win this one, especially with how close Ariel Arise are to all their ults. Yeah, this could be a big, big fight for Ariel Arise. Faithful Light not finding anything last time, looking to do some of that here. And they're starting to win this engagement without any ultimates anyway. Faithful Light or Ar Ariel Arise may just seal this one up. Fabrice looking for some damage, finds it with the help of Parasley. Double kill for the Tyra. Ernest does pull one back here, so he could play spoiler to some of this, not before Venator finds the last shot. And this is looking like a good mid fight. They didn't really have to use all that much. Whirlwind, Fae Flight, Crossfire. No assert dominance needed to be used. Reanimate just now up. They're looking to push the issue. It really does come down to if Aaron Manor roll back on that last that last conversion, and that's to win the game, mm -hmm. use those ults all day. Right. It's to get three points. You still have to close the game out. Maintain two of them, at least. You, know, you want to be able to keep two fully charged. You had Dome Shield at 73%. Because now, yeah, you get to pop them out. You get to throw them through. You're going to be able to recharge them. But it almost feels like you're using it for nothing, mm -hmm. I guess, is the best oh, way sure. to word it. Like, it just kind of feels like, well, now we're throwing them out because we have them. Right. And because it's going to help in the defense, it's not going to, like, oh, just because I have this evil mojo means... You know, I have to hold it till next round, but there's just so many moments where if they had played the conversion a little smarter, they could have won that last point fight, but Ariel Arise just kind of dominated as well, yeah. so you had to take it with a grain of salt. Well, the, they got first blood in, in just an even battle, and then they just they steamrolled that little advantage to the rest. King Nick trying to zone out. He's kind of left on an island over here for Brees. Makes good on that advantage. There's Dome Shield. Barrage as well from the back line for Aaron Monner is going to try to stall this out just a little bit longer. A minute and 10 seconds left for Ariel Arise to push this one in. For Brees into the flutter. No health. Good double shot there from Faded. Great barrage from him. Gives him a great advantage on this defense. Venatoro, last one to drop. Reanimate's ready. Don't imagine he uses it. This could be a... Cri critical zone from Aaron Monner to secure this defense. Imagine if he did use it. Yeah. You want a, an illustration of how terrible Terminus ult could be, using it in that scenario. <laughs> if you ever find yourself in that scenario, do not ult, because you will just die almost immediately after. But there were so many people by his dead body. It's, imagine how imagine how much damage you could have that, done. It's that temptation, <laughs> right? But like that's actually the, the biggest marker for a Terminus ult. Is if you get a kill with it, already immensely successful. Yeah. But it's what you do with the light, the life thereafter, right? right? When you get picked back up from that, from the ground, it's remaining. can you accomplish anything? Like, are you going to capture the point if you right. do this? Are you going to get a kill, or are you just going to get melted again? And and like that Seven, scenario is one where six, maybe you get a kill, maybe you just get melted. You don't know when you pull the trigger on it. And it's good to have that for these moments towards the end. You're in overtime. That second life might save your team's life. Might not need it here. Great start from Ariel Arise. They get a couple kills. Faded, King Nick, both drop down. Venator starting to come into his own a little bit. On this Terminus for Brees. After a rough start to the game, able to help Ariel Arise push successfully. And wouldn't you guess it, another 3-3. One more mid-fight to decide the tiebreaker. I mean, this is going swimmingly for Ariel Arise. The last two fights have been very significant in their control. I mean, that was one moment where I think Willow was met with a lot more damage than she anticipated. But being able to come back into this, recognize, you know what, this isn't over just because they wiped us. I mean, 50 seconds left, we still have plenty of time. They definitely were able to use it. And I mean, Willow's eight and eight, Parasley's eight and five. I mean, their support is one and six. It's yep. not 
crazy amounts of kills. It's just kills at the right Five, moments yeah. four, More impactful. that are coming down Three, for him. Two. More impactful. Resilience, hot item by. Four for Ariel Arise. Three for Aaron Monner. A couple master ridings to try to get in, maybe get some dismounts. Blade will really be the most effective at that. Catches two, catches three actually on the dismounts. Maybe not immediately important, but the zone already that Air Monitor have bought it is pretty big. Reanimate does get used. Venator this time. So that first blood for Faded goes waiting. Faith Blade a little bit more impactful. Great assert dominance might open the door here. Air Monitor forced to fall back. Big shots from Fabrice, make it a double kill for the Willow. 42% on the mid. Faded only pulls back one. But that might be just enough for Ariel Arise to win this game. Yeah, I honestly, I think they have this one in the bag. It's There's not as much readily available to be able to get them a touch. They're going to need a kill right here, maybe two to get that bear. But he got through dismounted before he got dismounted there. Now he's going to be able to touch. Yeah, through time and space was pretty big as well. Alex Kidd killed off on the back. Venator burning away in the dome shield. He dies as well. Now Aaron Monner from 24% looking for maybe one more mid fight. Whirlwind and Overpower, the two that are ready. One might be more impactful than the other. 48% for Aaron Monner steadily climbing. Overpower, Parasite back into base for 10 more seconds. I mean, I can already just scream that Victor is a huge factor and why they've been able to do this. Whirlwind keeping them alive, though. Nobody dies. Up, but no one's able to burn them down. It's 93 to 93. And Faded has not been oh, touched pay throughout the back end of this fight. Barrage finds one, Barrage finds two, almost gets three, but he gets the assist. Overtime ticks away, and against all odds, Aaron Monner fight their way back, and Aaron Monner win Ice Mines. There's so much that goes right for them on the mid fight that I can't pull it to any individual. Yeah. But getting to the mid fight, it's all faded. And yeah. the reason it's all faded and not Barrick is because there's three members lined up from Aerial Arise. There's a Tyra, there's an Ash, and there's a Terminus off on the side. He's, he's off screen for a reason. He's coming around to look over here. Ash right. and Tyra are focused on this victor. They want to kill him because he's the one fighting back. He gets the kill onto the Tyra, and Barrick just goes around. Yep. He pulls all the attention towards him, and that's when Barrick gets through that opening allowed them to get in, get the touch, stop the point capture, and it also helps that, you know, 75,000 damage, 154,000 damage. They were able to charge up their ults, get them at the right time, and just that one simple touch opened up the doors. Well, you said he's only 21,000 damage ahead. Yeah, now he's a little further. Is that why you say only? Because it could be that bad by the end of the game? <laughs> yeah, it's 21,000. I mean, at the end of the first round, that's a good gap. At the end of the game, you're looking 50. at 50 to 60k <laughs> ahead of everybody else, yeah. I'll take that. And 16, 8, and 13 is good for best slash line in the game. Support's continuing to have a big impact. Filet hit a couple important through times and spaces yeah. around the end of that one. 6, 3, and 31. Talk about 37 affected kills for the healer on Aaron Monner. Big, big performance. Ernest on the pip. I, I expected a big game. 11, 6, and 16 was a good game for the pip. Some evil mojos hit. Some didn't, but the damage was there. And a huge factor at the end again they might not have had the most initial capture but evil mojo kill the terminus make him yeah. use his reanimate very early in that round even though you lose the fight right afterward he doesn't have that for the rest of the game so you pulled that out in the perfect moment and it's again little times like that where these ult changes or the, these ults that when you use them win you or lose you a game and several times you saw terminus kind of stuck in that position or Terminus just caught too many evil mojos throughout that entire game. Uh, but th that's a big one from Aaron Monner. I mean, again, we can rehash the standings all we want, but but these are games that you need to win. If you're going yeah. up against oh, Flashpoint, yeah. that needs to be a we're fighting for first place type of game. If you want to you know, qualify for HRX qualifiers, you need to be beating the teams that are beneath you in the standings. So important win there from Aaron Monner. Still one away from sealing up the set. Find out if they do it right after this. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Console League.
Welcome back in, guys. Ice Mines, all said and done. Stamp of approval from Aaron Monitor in this case. They do manage to take it 2-1, to one. already a 3-3 score. They were tied up until the very end. They managed to clutch it out. Yeah, it was it was great at the end. I mean, that the zoning just barely not what it had to be. Letting yeah. the barrack get through made things really tough for Aerial Horizon. I, they just didn't have the characters that could retouch. I mean, they got back in, but they had to use the ultimates in the first place. That fight was just just out of their hands, I think, because of that. Yeah, I mean, I could completely agree with that, too. I mean, you you have the... You give them the victor. Aaron Monitor has a really, really good victor. You get you get that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, in response, Ariel Arise, they have the Tyra. But both times we've seen Tyra be picked, I mean, it seems like Tyra's the weak link out of both Victor and Vivian. I don't know if that's yeah. controversial to say, but I feel like she. you probably should just get rid of both of them. Nah, man, but... What are they going to do about Talus? I uh, don't know what that one. I think they can just get rid of Victor and Vivian what are they at gonna, this point. What are they going to do? But, but then they're not banning Talus. Mm, okay, we're going to go to the next map and see what it is that we have in store for us to at least see where we're going to go for this game. Bright Marsh in this case. Uh, okay, now here's one of the three usual suspects that you were talking yeah. about before. Okay, yeah, here's, yeah. here's Serpent, what, Serpent, Jag, and Bright are definitely, yeah, yeah, like definitely the definitely. three basic maps, I would say moving in here and right now willow ban early so mm. i guess even after they i think performed pretty well with it last game i was actually impressed by the fey flights yeah. i think coming out usually fey flights kind of on console at least it seems like a lot of people just take them into melee range yeah like they just point blank use it for the infinite ammo and it kind of gets the willows taken down sometimes but i was impressed with with the positioning of the fey flights and the use of that thought that was pretty solid so getting rid of that would maybe make sense looks like victor probably going to be the first pick for aerial arise yeah I would assume after the Vivian ban with the bans that Aaron Monner have done, it seems like the whatever the best Sorrowful character left is the one that gets picked. And it will be Victor. Ariel okay. arrives with a pretty with a pretty solid pick for this map. Victor very strong in that tree area, being able to spam through the window on the point. Though Tyra is is actually pretty solid on this map too. Yeah, but I said be. that last map. Yep. I and and it, it fell apart at the end. I mean, it really just depends on what Aaron Monitor really want to be able to bring to the table. In this case, they're bringing the Khan first, they're bringing the Geno second. I mean, Victor is being locked in on Ariel Ariza's side, so this time they've taken away that Victor from Aaron Monitor, which I really, really like. I do appreciate that one, of course. And on, the re on the response, though, they can't pick up the Tyra, but mm -hmm. not going to get into that yet, of course. I mean, they get, they, they get the Makoa, you give it to them, you leave it open in this case. And I mean, I feel on, like, I don't know, why why give them a Koa? They're going with double off tank again. Why the Makoa? Why not try and take that away from them with first pick and not just go uh, Makoa Genos? Khan is just more consistent because of the hit scan. I, I okay. think that's what it that is. The sense, hit scan yeah. plus the overpower, pretty <laughs> solid. They now have the overpower counter to the Ash, taking her out of that assert dominance. Very powerful. Just negating one of the best ultimates in the game as long as you can hit it. I mean, these and these players can. I mean, technically, it technically it's hit scan. Yeah, I mean, technically it, overpower is hit scan. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, makes sense to be like consistent to hit. Team, but, but with me, Fernando, that's interesting. Yeah, I agree. That that's it's a point tech that can apply a lot of pressure. I think is what it is. We've noticed a lot of Ash Fortress Breaker these last couple games, kind of playing her as a point tank because she can immediately go from zero to one hundred, capping to in your backline. Nando, definitely a little bit slower. I would say at doing that, but still able to apply that pressure and going in with an immortal might actually let the Eevee kind of get away with a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, nice even being able to have that mobility, of course, is going to be able to do what it is that she needs to to be able to skirt around those corners, get to the back line, fire those shots, come mm -hmm. back thanks to Wormhole, and just be able to apply that pressure there. I mean, we've seen her be picked on console a lot more. She's a good character. Oh, Maeve, Grover, so very hard. last two. Sky. Mm hmm. I like to see it. I like to see it for the Makoa counter. That's why they're picking the Sky, right? He's yeah. Makoa. Yeah. Well, not just that. It, it, she's good into the Ash, too. Ash well, is better sense. at finding sense. her, but any tank with high HP gets shredded by Debilitate. So having that, having Sky to fight both is pretty powerful. Although the DPSs are kind of kind of rough for her to play into. I, th I think Maeve plays too far away, and Victor just has so much damage, he can outpace the Sky sometimes. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. The odd, the two odd ones out being the sort of Fernando and the Sky on Aaron Monner's side. We'll have to see if they can be able to make this team comp work in Game 4. I mean, if Navi has anything to say about it, Fernando's no longer an odd one out. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if Phoenix has something to say about it, Fernando is now in the meta and he has his spot. Does a good bit of damage, does point tank things, does off tank things, depending on how you want to play him. Sky can shred, so can Victor. We've seen some good Eevee, we've seen some bad Eevee. This is one where the team comps are good, different on both sides. Maybe just whoever plays better takes the game. Honestly, on a map like Rightmarsh, 100% of the way, that's how it's going to play. So it's come through. Formidable there for the Fernando.
<clears throat> debilitate for Sky. Sorry, as Ouch. we uh, we come through, that's gonna hurt Makoa a lot. It's gonna hurt Ash, but admittedly, that again, when you're looking at this, very similar to what I was saying about Burn Monster, ten thousand health disappears really fast when you do twenty five percent of it. And uh, this is the, I would say, pretty standard loadout. You get the yeah. cooldown reduction with Poisoner. Decrepify on three, so 1.8 seconds not consuming ammo after you hit your Poison Bolts. So you're, you're just getting a, a fast melt of damage as long as those Poison Bolts are hitting. And uh, Ernest, we've seen his flexibility today. Definitely somebody who can hit those. Fabrice, in, out, kill number one. Aerial Arise, lose King Nick. And we're on the point, 87%. So plenty of time left to get back and get in this fight, especially if Ernest starts to melt away at the tanks like he is right now. There's your rotation. Ernest says bye to Ash. One more into the victor. We'll clean that one up as well. Makoa, not long for this world. Does end up getting Parasite. Might just be a double onto Venator, and this is the power of a sky. Not only that, but you see the power of Victory Rush. One of the other cards he was running at level 5, which is just, I'm going to get movement speed after I get a kill. And it's going to last a healthy chunk of time. I'm going to chase you down. Especially I'm going to chase the team down. I'm going to, like, <laughs> you can't keep track of me in stealth. And so not only are you losing track of me, but you can't trace me because I'm going faster than you expect. And then I'm melting you whenever you decide to look at me. Yep. There's, uh, you know, Sky is, is powerful. So powerful in the right situations. It shows you why. 8,000, now 10,000 above. Just now reaching that 10,000 damage per minute mark. Time Bomb just gets some zoning in. Parasle is trying to outpoke the sky. That's not going to work, especially with the Fernando from iTech on your side. Halo moving closer towards the 2-0. It's just so much damage. It is. And Sometimes you just have to you sit back and you just watch it because it's so satisfying. Also, having so it it seems like a short amount of time. Like what was one point eight seconds? One point eight with yeah, Decrepify so three. Seems like it's not going to be too long, right? One point eight seconds in this game, yeah. especially with how fast Sky fires. That's more than her clip that yeah. she's getting. She's essentially getting instead of the twenty five shots that she's supposed to have, about fifty out before it does fully consume and she has to reload. And when you're looking at tanks, <clears throat> already having their health bar melted. Then on top of that, you're taking all this extra damage from the bullets. Like, it's just, it's just deadly. It's a good deadly yeah. combo. I mean, it, and you know, kind of generically, I mean, if you hit your poison bolts, you have poisoner five, so it's a five second reduced cooldown. You get them back up a little bit faster, not, not using a lot of ammo. I mean, you can potentially hit two volleys of poison bolts, not consume any of your ammo and keep things moving uh, with how you play it. So it's a, a potent loadout that Ernest has made good on so far. Aerial Arise have stalled things out. Ernest kind of playing just the front side here, not too much of a flank just yet. For Brees, back on the Mave. Big game on Jaguar Falls to help Aerial Arise secure their one win in this one. But Aaron Monner knocking on the doorstep of one more point. I mean, so far, really good control from them. That's going to be good a good overpower. overpower. Should be a kill as well. Makoa just too far away to, sh to, to shell spin back into this one. And, and, I mean, even with the whirlwind popped, yeah, your health bars are going to stay full, but you need more damage to eliminate them. And there you're, nice. you're still the ones falling. That's a good commander's grab. Faded is going to toss the ice storm up top. Just add a little bit of cripple just in case anyone is trying to get out of base and get back. Ice block follows him back to spawn in a big first round from Aaron Bonner. But yet for Brees, for Aerial Arise, doing his best to keep things in balance. This has to be one of the best compositions to run and execute for Mave. Because both tanks that you're looking to yeah. kill uh, with your pounce, you pounce through shields. They, they have nothing to keep them safe yep. and alive. And so far, both of them, the only death they picked up is off of this Mave. So I'm looking at that playing a bigger role as time yeah. goes forward. Immortal being available, especially being kind of like a snap immortal, as you can play it now. You can pop it, cancel out of it early if it so pleases you, means Aaron Manor. Might be able to kind of counter that one out, as well as counter out some of these others that, that might be big. Like I mean, just a barrage if it's about to kill someone, yeah. all of a sudden you're you're safe. Well, Fabrice has uh, been kind of the saving grace of Aerial Rise in this game at 5-3 and 0, everyone else. Pretty negative. He's going to be able to follow up Eevee. Faded maybe thought he had a little bit more distance on that one, but he did not. 
That's a good zoning time bomb. You could tell for Brees wanted to follow up on the midnight, but he was not able to. A hook up into the high ground, knocked back. Immortal keeps some members of Aaron Monner left alive. Controlling the point with oh, fast cap piece. though as aerial arise and this is when the kills start to tumble I mean just being able to find a little more damage on the Nando there could have done it It does have the reset so you might have been able to kind of like pounce reset pounce maybe get the elimination if it did enough damage but Ultimately you don't need it at the end of the day. You can just kind of jump over find some of those shots and Ultimately Shields they're cool. They're yep. awesome. Not when they're 30 feet from the point. They don't really accomplish yeah. too much there So Aaron Manor on the back foot. Well, it's definitely a difference of like offensive versus defensive usage of ultimates. That kind of engagement between Faded and Fabrice, the uh, the May versus EB one v one that we saw, ended up playing a pretty big role. You lost so much of that flank pressure, essentially at the very beginning of that round. Aaron Miner. A good start to the defense for them, at least right now. Aerial eyes all the way back. This is a. Offense for them, defense for Aaron Monner. Ice Storm as well, might just further stagger things out for Breeze Force backwards, but he's gonna stay out of the Ice Storm as long as he can. Overpower misses for King Nick, back to 30% for that one. Barrage as well. Both teams using everything just to try to keep things where they are. I mean, a minute and a half left still to burn down if you're Aaron Manor to try and get yourself a lead. A good time bomb. That's a good time bomb, uh, Right yeah. in the middle. And well, I'm not sure whether it was the time bomb, the poison darts, or just regular shots there that killed off Minotaur, but they were able to find it and they were able to just, well, slay him pretty much right where he stood. So much damage in one area. And well, this might be confusing because of their position, but Aaron Manor are defending right now. Indeed they are. I'm trying really to look well. at, uh, yeah, yeah, I think somehow too well. They got their offense figured out, so defense on the side of the map shouldn't be that much different. Looking at the cooldown of these, these poison bolts. So three seconds when they're used, 1.8 seconds of no ammo consumption as long as you hit them. So by the time that's worn out, you may have only shot, you know, 10 bolts or something before your next round of poison bolts are ready. I mean, you can you can stack that on top of one another over and over and over and over again and not have to reload for at least one or two rotations. Doesn't help when you're dead. Of course, Lou gets the good shots there. Aerial arise. Back to the payload with 15 seconds 15 left. Overtime seconds likely to begin here. As it is definitely more than 10 seconds away from its final spot in Aaron Monner's base. One more staggered out kill. Could be big here for Brees. Gets aggressive. Doesn't find the daggers. Parasolet finds the shots, though. That's a double kill from the sky. Might just seal this one up. Back in the back line of Aerial Arise. They have too many directions to be looking at right now. Three on this re-engage for Ernest. That'll seal up this defense, seal up point number three for Aaron Miner, one point away from taking the set. And it feels pretty good for him. They charge back almost every single one of their ults, the only one not quite available at the beginning it's through time and space. Granted, there's all five available there for Aerial Arise as well, so you're going to be matched in maybe that department. But only one team has a 10-3 and 10 sky right now. Who is and it? She's the one that is, uh, well, kind of pulling ahead here. And it's, you know, one of the things you were highlighting was you hit the poison darts, you fire, there's a chance that you've maybe only gone down to 15 right. by the time, like in, in your clip. There's also a decent chance that, I mean, you could use it when you have three shots left. Yeah. And you go, okay, well, I sprayed you with 22. Now I hit the poison darts. Now I get to finish you off without having to worry yep. about this reload speed. And so there's a lot of combos here for Ernest that just lets him keep firing. And now that with a time bomb, you get to guide where they're running. Right. I mean, he's he's in a really good position to maybe control the pace of this fight. Well, that's the key word, isn't it, with oh, wow. with Sky is the uh, the positioning. Looks like Alex Kidd was trying to get aggressive, but a good overpower from King Nick stops that one in its tracks. Thirty six percent for Aaron Monner, one for one trade. Midnight for Fabrice, looking to keep <laughs> Ariel Arais in this set, but just dancing around the issue here. Good hook onto Ernest eliminates. The sky issue, but an immortal down onto the point. It's going to keep Aaron Monner alive, but there wasn't that much aggression returning from Ariel Arise that maybe needed or warranted that immortal. Swinging away as Venator finds the kill. Hook just misses, but with fast cap, Ariel Arise back on the point with 42%. The best news right now for Aaron Manor through time and space. It's available, and it can clear someone off of the point or at least force them to be very <laughs> uncomfortable. That time it comes through. I see a very low Grover, so, yes. but there's no kills. No kills, you're right. Did maybe force some positioning. No deaths, so. One final fight maybe decides whether this one continues on or 
Aaron Miner are going to take the set. Venator, first kill on the King Nick. Parasley as well gets engaged onto this one. Ernest is still alive, though, starting to plug away on a Venator. He's free and clear on Parasley. A double kill for the Sky. Looking for three. A Grover's not going to win that fight. A half health. Ash isn't going to either. Aaron Miner at 99% somehow survive. And they win game three and take the set. The biggest skill for me in that last fight is when Fabrice goes down. Fabrice has been the saving grace all yep. game. He's the best slash line on the team, the best performance during Bright Marsh, and all of a sudden Maeve was gone. And there was a lot of really good play for the first half of that, but once she was gone, Ernest yep. comes back and is like, cool, no one's here to block me anymore. <laughs> I can just keep running forward. And, well, he did just that. Yeah, Hold I mean, W. You, you killed Ernest at the very beginning of the fight, but then couldn't, couldn't do anything about him around the end of it in, in that first Second wave of ultimates, like the kind of crashing yeah, tide Ernest back and forth. Two. Right, yeah, electric boogaloo, and it, it, it hit its stride for sure. Big performance there for Brees. You, just looking at the entire set, I think the, the big star player for Ariel Arise throughout this one. Top damage for his team. 101,000 for the Sky, out yeah. damaging a Victor. Parasley on the Victor kind of just fell by the wayside in this one. It's not because he played bad. It's because you had a 13-4 and 13 Sky on your team. I mean, yeah, when you have that kind of performance. Also, just going to throw it out there, 9,000 more damage if that fight had maybe gone on a little longer with Sky kind of keeping up that performance. Yeah. Would have been double the highest amount for yeah. from Ariel Arise. It was about 55 there for Fabrice and 101K there for Ernest. And it's just, it was good control, really good time bombs in the right position. And it's the perfect amount of time bombs, or the perfect placing of time bombs where... This isn't meant to get a kill. Right. It's meant to make you get off of the point and come right. to me. Like, I am throwing you into a shark tank where I am the shark. It's a self-sufficient shark. Well, you know, positioning is just, that's that's what Sky, I mean, she's technically a flank, but without any true mobility, you have some stealth, but you, you have to pick and choose when you come out of that stealth where you're positioning yourself properly so that the enemy team isn't gonna just be able to turn around and kill you because you're not very healthy, you're not very tanky. So you gotta pick and choose those moments, and Ernest certainly did so here. And, and you know maybe that's why you, you kind of think, "Wow, Ariel Arise is running away with this one." Well, no, Ernest just hasn't revealed himself yet. Yeah. He's, he's finding this big roundabout flank, and then melts three of them from behind. And it's just again those moments where if you aren't able to lock her down, if you know Makoa Hook, which is what killed him earlier, yeah. isn't on cooldown or isn't in the right position, or maybe it just misses. She's going to get away with a lot, and you can't do anything about it. She gets away with 13 kills. They also get away with win number three and set win number one of this week for this console league Monday. Set number two in just a minute. The Paladins Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladins.